Hello and welcome to Go With The Heat. I'm Dominic. And I'm John. I'm Melissa. And this is your cultural guy, the phenomenon that was Miami Vice. This week, we're talking about season four, episode three, titled Death and the Lady. Questionable name. I don't like that they named that the movie in this episode, Death and the Lady, and the name of the episode is that. <laughs> I enjoy the punny <laughs> titles oh, that Vice okay. comes up with. I don't know. I was just saying. It originally premiered on October 16th, 1987. It is written by David Black. He's got two episodes, one more coming. He was a story editor for season four. So we're probably, you know, he's involved with essentially every story in this season. So get used to David Black. And then there's this episode. So just warning. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is directed by Colin Buxy. And he's got three or more episodes coming to all of them in season four, I believe. So again, this episode is kind of indicative of what we can expect more of in season four because these people are going to work a bunch on a bunch of episodes this season. So that's the thing. Yep. (laughs) All right, John, we got quite a bit of music in this episode. Some people we've heard from before, some new people. What do you got for us this week? So yeah, let's start with artists that we have already heard from. We have the songs Never Let Me Down Again and Pleasure, Little Treasure, Depeche Mode. Depeche Mode, you'll remember from our episode El Viejo. We've already talked about these guys. The band consists of Dave Gahan on vocals, Martin Gore on keyboards and guitar, Andrew Fletcher also on keyboards, uh, and Alan Wilder would join after Vincent Clark would leave after the first album on drums. Depeche Mode was incredibly successful in the late 80s, sold over 100 million records, and we've already pretty much talked about their journey as a band so we'll talk a little bit about the band members themselves martin gore actually after vincent clark left the band after the first album marcus gore took over writing song duties and pretty much all of their big songs personal jesus they were all written by gore all you need to know about martin gore is that he's Pretty much lyrically, the uh, Depeche Mode. Dave Gohan was more of the musician. His actually his story is kind of interesting. He was born David Calcott in 1962, but his his dad left when he was six months old. His mom would remarry oil executive Jack Gahan. He would pass away when Dave was ten, and Dave would start acting out. He would. St- steal cars, joyride, get caught with graffiti, and actually got put in one of those, like, detention schools. Through the beginning of his adulthood, he would go through, like, 20 different jobs until finally settling down, doing uh, displays in store windows, would eventually be invited to join the band after performing David Bowie's Heroes at just a local nightclub. And then there is Andy Fletcher, who, in his own words, he said, Martin's the songwriter, Alan's the good musician, Dave's the vocalist, and I just bum around. <laughs> and pretty much. That's, that's an accurate pretty statement. Pretty much, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he kind of just hangs around and gets paid to be there. So that's just a little bit more about Depeche Mode. Let's talk about the other three songs we got. We have Vet for the Insane from Fields of Nephilim which is an English goth rock band formed in 1984. The band's name actually refers to uh, the biblical race, a biblical race of giants or angel and human hybrids. Lyrically, the band incorporates magical themes, including Cthulhu mythos, the Sumerian religion, chaos magic, and the works of Aleister Crowley a 19th century musician and novelist. (laughs) They kind of spun their image based off of old spaghetti western and often wore cowboy dusters with a weathered look, which they would actually literally use flour to weather their clothes for photo shoots and performances. Between 85 and 90, they would release three albums with some mediocre success in the UK, mostly on in charts in 91 the band would play their final gigs before frontman carl mccoy would leave the band the remaining members of the band would change their name to rubicon and release two albums before disbanding in the mid 90s mccoy on the other hand see he would form a new group called nephilim n-e-f-i-l-i-m <laughs> oh i see what you did there Ah, see what I did there? <laughs> PH became an F right there. 
So, but they would only release one album, the album Zune, which after years of held back from being released due to disagreements with the label, would finally re- be released in 96 and would be the only album that band would would release. 98 to 2002, the band would do a re- uh, some reunion shows. They would also put out new album, their first since breaking up. To this day, occasionally they do get back together, collaborate, do shows. I think they've released another album in the 2000s as well. But that leads us to The Story Never Ends by Naked Prey, who is a U.S. rock band from Tucson, Arizona, formed in 1982 by former Green on Red drummer Van Christian and Giant Sandworms member David Seeger. The band was credited with helping pioneer what was known as Desert Rock Sound. It was associated with a number of bands in, from the Tucson area in the ni- 80s and 90s. You which lie. I guess desert, you lie. I, I guess, <laughs> I guess <laughs> desert rock is like a country punk. Of course, Arizona would have some weird mixture of music that's only in Arizona because it's too stupid to weave its way into regular society. And I say that as an Arizona. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. So but I will make you feel a little bit better, Tom. Naked Prey would release seven albums from 1984 to 1995. Very little commercial success, but would accrue a cult following in Europe like several other Tucson area bands from that era. <laughs> so somewhere in Europe, people really dug desert rock. I've heard from people who have traveled to Europe that people in Western, like Northwestern Europe, say Germany and, and, the, and the Netherlands and stuff, that they're really fascinated with cowboys and the, the American Southwest. Mm. Like that, that lifestyle. And so, okay, that kind of makes sense. They'd also be into mm. music that's supposedly from there. Whatever, they can have it. Yeah. <laughs> the band would break up in the mid 90s, but they reunite periodically to do a performance here and there, mostly in, in random parts of, of Europe, because uh, no one else. <laughs> and then that leads us to The Edge of Town by the band The Truth. And The Truth was a British rock band from 1982 to 1989. They did a new wave. They were formed by Dennis Greaves, who was formerly of the blues band Nine Below Zero, and Mick Lister in 1982. The band would go through numerous uh, lineup changes, but only Dennis and Mick would be continuous members throughout the band's time. Their debut album would be released in 1985, the album Playground. 87's Weapon of Love album would mark a stylistic change and would also see the most commercial success with the title track hitting number 7 on US rock charts and number 65 on Hot on the Hot 100 as well as several songs from the album being used on the 1987 sci-fi film The Hidden which apparently has some kind of cult following the band would disband after 1989's Jump would be released and then they would reform in 2012 for a few shows with the plan of more shows whether or not they ever did those shows i have no idea pretty much that that's your music i was actually um, really surprised at how diverse even though the music all sounded very similar very diverse backgrounds that the bands come from you know and i, I do i will point out fields of nephilim is considered somewhat influential they're the ones who did like the magic dark metal songs so they were actually kind of influential during their time even though they weren't commercially successful several bands have referenced them as being influence just i mean just based on the description of them and the sound of their music when when i heard it in the episode when i looked it up they were like the 80s version of imagine dragons i guess would be like the easiest way to describe it those are all words that i recognize you know Imagine Dragons. <laughs> I'm aware of those. Those are words that you can put together, and some people <laughs> might refer to them as a band. Uh, in my knowledge of Imagine Dragons, not in this house. Well, no one it... thinks of them as a band. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go give our final thoughts on this episode because I think we're happy to have seen and to have moved on from this episode. <laughs> let's go break this one down for the last time. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode of Go With The Heat. We would love to hear from you. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. Get us on Twitter, twitter.com slash go with the heat. 
facebook.com slash go with the heat. Be sure to check out that website, go with the heat.com. You can find all the ways to contact us, including the ones I just said, plus more. You can find all the ways to subscribe, including YouTube, TuneIn, iTunes, Google Play. I mean, you name it, we got it. I'm also trying to work on getting us on the lady tubes, which is, you know, those ladies that are inside the tubes that you have in your house. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> huh? Where you ask them questions and they respond back to you. Although mine's, mine's a man tube. I got mine set to a man voice. <laughs> 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 but we'd love to hear from you. Let us know what you think about this episode and the topic that they covered. Email us, go with the heat at gmail.com. That's going to do it for us this week. We hope you enjoyed this episode and we'll see y'all next time. Bye, pal. Bye.